Rosemary, thank you. Although uh, Beto O'Rourke lost the race for U.S. Senate last year, he went from a, a little-known congressman from Texas to a very popular figure on social media. Now O'Rourke is in San Francisco today. He's running for president amongst uh, 19 other candidates. It's his first visit to the Bay Area as a White House hopeful. And joining us to talk about O'Rourke and the big election coming up, political science professor, say hi to uh, Stephen Wolpert of St. Mary's. Good to have you here. Great to be here. All right, Professor. Well, let's talk about the significance of California because we really haven't been a player in the primaries because it used to be in June and it's moved up the first week of March. How big is that? It's huge because uh, now you don't have to do really well in Iowa or New Hampshire in order to be a viable candidate because if you can make it through to California and do well there, you're suddenly one of the top candidates. Uh, do you think, well, we're obviously seeing that with Beto here in town. Uh, the uh, governor of Washington was down. Uh, Hickenlooper was in town. Um, we're starting to become uh, a lot more relevant, I guess, for these candidates, right? Because we've got so many uh, electoral votes here. Right. It's a huge state, and it means that you can't just come to California, raise some funds, and then spend it somewhere else. You have to be able to show that you're viable in this state, which is a totally different demographic than the Midwest or New England. I know. I lived uh, a number of years in New Hampshire, covered primaries there. They hold on to that first in the country's primary you know, because it's a cash cow for the state, and this can only be good for California. Yeah, there's a, a problem that everyone wants to be early, and so if every state keeps moving up their primary dates, eventually they'll start having primaries, you know, as soon yeah. as the midterms are over, Right. and uh, the season will just seem like it's endless, which it already can seem to many people. It really is. 2020 still, what, a year and a half away, the yeah. election. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, Beto O'Rourke. Uh, your impressions of him, and how will he separate himself from the pack, uh, being a younger Democrat, kind of the new guard? Well, the, the big question is, who is the face of the Democratic Party in 2020? And it's really unclear. That's one reason why you have 20 candidates. It's, it's the most wide open field, the most candidates ever, and the earliest we've had them declare, which suggests that there's a real question about what the Democratic Party wants to look like coming out of the midterm elections where there was a surge of energy from black voters, urban, educated professionals, and so forth that retook the House. In 2016, though, they lost states where there are a lot of voters who felt left behind. And those are two very different profiles. And so it's up to the Democratic Party to sort out who is best positioned to reclaim the White House. And let's go from O'Rourke and all the way to Biden, who jumped into the fray uh, earlier in the week. Uh, did he wait too long? Has the Democrat Party kind of moved on from uh, the old uh, the old horse, so to speak? Well, it's, it's hard to say that. Well, he wanted to run. Uh, yes, he did. In 2016, and the president persuaded him not to. He felt that Clinton was the one mm -hmm. who should be the candidate. Um, the, the problem for him now is it's unclear exactly uh, if he's the answer, what's the question? Uh, what is it that he stands for that will unite the two different factions, if you will, of the Democratic Party? It seems like he's focusing on attacking President Trump, which many of the other candidates have decided not to do. They're touting their policy proposals for education and environment and so forth. And he's saying we need to restore democracy. Some would say he's too old at 76. He'd be the older, uh, oldest president to be inaugurated at 78. But Bernie Sanders is a year older, right? Right. So. Yeah, that didn't. And he was really popular with college students. Right. So um, age, it is probably going to be a factor for some people. But with 20 candidates, uh, there are going to be so many other considerations. Um, with Biden, you wonder if he can stay on message. He, he is prone to talk more than he needs to and to commit gaffes from time to time. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be good theater the next six months, to yeah. say the least. Uh, let's talk about President Trump, because he plans to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. And the Supreme Court, which is on the conservative side, uh, weigh in on that and what that means. This is a historic case, and it appears that the conservative members of the court are poised to uphold the issue of having a citizenship question, which has never been on the census mm -hmm. in all the time we've had them. And what will, it will do 
predictably is result in an undercount of uh, people who are here legally or illegally who are not citizens. And what that can do is to shape how congressional districts are realigned and how federal funding goes. So it, could, it is a way that the Republicans are hoping to um, weaken the demographic drift towards the Democratic Party. It's always about politics, isn't it? This is a very political case. I the guess. political consequences are going to be huge. All right. Well, I imagine your students are having a field day with all that is transpiring. Yeah. Um, it, it must be enjoyable because there's probably some great discourse with what's going on in our country. People really woke up in 2016 and said, we really need to be paying attention, and the students are much more engaged, much more active than they were, mm -hmm. and that's exciting. Uh, whenever you're teaching politics, you want people to, to be motivated to understand what's really going on. And the Democratic Party uh, represents that with some uh, late 30-year-olds uh, running for president. Uh, Professor, thanks so much for coming in. Really it's appreciate my pleasure. it. Thank Stephen you. Wolpert. Appreciate that. We'll be right back with uh, more right here on Mornings on 2. Stay with us.